Welcome to Today Rocket Science. I'm Adam Balkin. School is in full swing, but homework hasn't stopped you from getting science, technology, engineering, and math experiences outside of the classroom. In this episode, we'll dive head on into engineering with students from across the country building, flying, and coding their way into STEM careers. We'll take a look at how some students are starting to get an out of this world experience, and we'll hear how one recent outer space blockbuster matches up with real life spacewalking from someone who's been there himself. And get a behind the scenes look at the engineering workshop where the Red Bull Stratus capsule and suit were built for a world record breaking jump. Later, performance and science meet on stage. We'll check out some ways science, technology, engineering, and math are reaching new audiences in ways you might not expect. To get things kicked off, let's take a look at this year's World Maker Fair, which took place here at the New York Hall of Science, and how young tinkers from around the globe are building the foundation for tomorrow. Carolyn Wagner has a story. They came, they saw, they built stuff. Make no mistake about it, Maker Fair is crawling with creativity. They're exploring, they're getting hands on, they're tinkering, and they're, you know, making the future. Now in its fourth year, this high-tech county fair is attracting its biggest crowd yet. Some 75,000 people explored the grounds of the New York Hall of Science during the fair. Add to that equation 650 vendors and presenters, and you've got the formula for one bright and curious crowd, looking to take the latest tools and technology and turn them into the innovations of tomorrow. Even when it seems like you're just having fun, there's still a lot of science at play. This life-size mousetrap, a giant Rube Goldberg machine, is really just a giant display of physics. It's nice to see a lot of the, how the engineering works behind things, seeing people build things. Some of the hands-on opportunities are low-tech, and sometimes it is rocket science. Oh. Just ask Benjamin Berry, a maker in the making who launched his first spacecraft and was ready to move on to robots. Have you ever seen a robot? No. Do you think you could build a robot? No. Well, he's only four, not eight, like Dylan Germain, who built this bot based on a few notes from his teacher. I built a robot out of, like, houseware stuff, and the eyes light up and it goes forwards, backwards, and turns. For kids like this, Maker Fair is a candy store. It just really gets a curiosity going, uh, and, you know, kind of away from their interest in just video games and stuff, I think. So what do you think you want to be when you grow up? An inventor. You're already there. For Innate Rocket Science, I'm Tara Lynn Wagner. One student we met at the fair already has his future mapped out, and he's got his sights set high, getting help from a mentor he met as a kid. Our Rocco Vertuccio has the story. Elijah Hedrington dreams of flying planes. The first time I went in an airplane, I was really excited because I love to like, see things fly. Today, he and his classmates in an after-school program at the Bronx Aerospace High School are building remote control planes they will send soaring into the air. People that see from the inside, they see it in a new way because like, I built that and so well, that's an accomplishment that I did. For Elijah, it all started when he was just six years old. He met the captain of a flight he was on. He was hooked. He showed me the cockpit and stuff and he taught me how to do controls and then we eventually looked, took a picture and then um, like, he became my role model after that. The picture stayed on Elijah's dresser for 10 years until the two were reunited. Almost every day for the past 10 years from that day, I've always looked at that picture uh, before I left for school, and that's been my motivation to do better in school and to try to be the best that I can be. Captain Eric Scott stayed in contact with Elijah. He gives him advice on the road to becoming a pilot. You're making a difference in a sense that someone made a difference in your life, so now you're trying to make a difference in somebody else's life. It's pretty cool because you don't, you're not restricted to just like your parents or your teachers. Captain Scott says STEM plays an important role in the future. For kids to get involved with technologies, we get in science, it's just a way of developing their mindset. And for these students, this workshop is paving the runway for them to take off in a career in aerospace. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Rocco Vertuccio. In North Carolina, students are using their engineering know-how for a good cause, helping sick children in the hospital. Meg Smith has a story. These metal manufacturing students at Weaver Academy in Greensboro 
are using this machine to make clocks for sick children in the hospital. Well, this project started when I lost my son to cancer at age 11. During the course of him being four years being at Chapel Hill, uh, we tried to come up with things that we could do for the kid. Gene Holder and his students now make the clocks in addition to keychains like this, all while learning valuable skills at the same time. Students like Christopher Rivenbark say that approach has helped him hone his STEM skills. You really apply everything in here, being whether it's temperatures, dealing with the plasma, mathematics, dealing with the mill, how in, having to get the measurements right. It binds everything together. And students say the hands-on training and experience they're getting here in the classroom is already inspiring them to pursue future careers. I never thought I'd be able to do some of the stuff I'm able to do now. And being able to take that into a future job is what's really helping a lot of us. Because we're able to go straight out of here into a community college and then they will place you in a job. Helping students continue to help others in the future. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Meg Smith. To find more hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities, visit the Connectory at connectamillionminds.com. One young girl is exploring her curiosity about engineering in another way and learning to build and maintain her own web page. Nine-year-old Alex Jordan is coding in the big leagues, typing away at the next web conference in New York City. She's working on a social network for pre-teens, but this site won't work anything like Facebook. It's a site to connect young people so they can arrange in-person meetups to hang out. You have to have a lot of perseverance and you have and um, you have to set goals, and because if you set goals, you know what you want to do, and you can work toward that. She explained to me that I, I hadn't arranged enough play dates for over the summer, so this was going to solve that problem. Alex and her father are working on the site Super Fun Kid Time, where parents and preteens can register to find fellow friend seekers and arrange hangouts. Today at this hackathon, they're working on incorporating Uvu video chat into their site, so users can connect online. I, I wasn't convinced by the name of the, of, the, uh, of the website. She said, no, it's going to be superfunkidtime.com. And you know what? We had thousands of people sign up, so I'm guessing she knew better than me. For Alex, it's about getting to learn more about one of her favorite activities. You got to work with computers, and I think computers are just so interesting. Alex's dad says he's glad she's getting interested at a young age. So she's nine years old, and, and it's about this sort of age that we lose a lot of our young women from technology and sciences. There's vastly more men than women in sciences and technology, and one of the, the biggest reasons for this is that we're, we're allowing ourselves to lose our girls and our young women between the ages of sort of nine and 15. If you start at, start at a young age, you can do more in your lifetime. This dad is doing his part to keep his young coder plugged in. All right, we're going to stop here for a quick break, but coming up... We'll get a behind-the-scenes look at how close to reality one of the fall's biggest blockbusters is. Get a tour of the workshop where Daredevil Felix Baumgartner's suit and capsule were built for the world's highest free fall, and see how science is meeting the stage in a traveling act that might show up at your school one day. For more information about science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, visit connectamillionminds.com during the break.